I've been told that some people even use their dining room table to eat on. <laughs> With me it, right now, it's chitting potatoes, and boy, have I ever got potatoes to, to grow this year. Not such large quantity, but large number of varieties. Uh, what you should start to see scrolling by here now is a list of the 12 varieties. The number in brackets after the name of the variety is the number of seed potatoes that I have for that particular variety. So you'll see there's a number of them that I just have the one uh, seed potato. So it's not, you know, one pot of potatoes. We'll see whether or not I like them, I guess. And then after that, it is the uh, whether it's an early or a mid-season or a fingerling potato. I placed my order with uh, Eagle Eagle Creek Farms uh, in Alberta, and uh, they arrived in great condition. I was surprised to receive two orders. The mistake is mine, not theirs. Last fall. I uh, attempted to place an order and get them to ship me some potatoes in the fall and that way I would store them and have them ready to chit in the spring, which is what I'm doing with these ones. Um, after I placed the order, I called them and they told me that they couldn't ship any because they're not allowed to ship them until the seed potatoes had been inspected and, and certified so they wouldn't be able to ship until spring. I just assumed that I didn't pay for that order, so I made another order this spring of different potatoes, evidently. Anyway, I had already paid for the one in the fall, and I paid for another order this spring, so I have a dozen varieties. These ones here were in uh, a couple of variety packs, which were four potatoes, four different varieties. So I only have, those are the ones that I only have one potato of each. Um, I also have my Cara potatoes, one seeds that I saved from last year and they've been out for a while so they're the chits on those are developing a bit more than the ones that I just put out but these are all good looking potatoes uh, they all had some eyes that were starting to to grow and they're nice and firm they're really so far I'm very impressed um, I think it was Harold in Ontario, a little gardener guy there, or woodworker guy, I forget what your, what your channel is called, Harold, um, who uh, used this company last year, and I was so impressed because it's so hard to find a company here that will sell you just a small number of seed potatoes for each variety so that you can grow a, a, you know, a, a selection. Uh, most companies want to sell you at minimum a five pound bag of one variety, so uh, this is uh, really a, a treat to find, I guess, and I'll be growing all these and seeing whether or not I like any of them. Anyway, down below also in the description below this video, I will put uh, all of the descriptions of each one of these as I took it from Eagle Creek's uh, online catalog. And I'll also put a link to their online catalog. There's still time to order if anybody wants to order from them. I'm not getting paid to say that, by the way. It's just that I, I find them a very reputable company to deal with. So the, the wording and description of each potato is taken directly from, from their website. So except for the Cara, and that's my own little bit of wording on the Cara. I love the Cara potatoes. Anyway, we'll move on to the next segment here, but I wanted to show you that I really am going to be growing potatoes this year. Well, before I take you out to show you what's happening in the hoop house and the gardens, I had to show you this. On the right there are, well, without the grow bags, are at least four feet tall, those are the sunberries, and on the left are some straggly-looking tomato plants that uh, had to be brought down and put by the door as well because they don't grow the lights. I'm at least 10 days away from being able to take these things out into the hoopos, so what they're going to transplant like, I don't know. But something I wanted to show you here, get zoomed in on it. If that's in focus or not, I don't know, I can't tell, but those are sunberries, uh, still very green. 
the thing is the three plants have been loaded in, in blossoms and I just every once in a while shake it and it seems to be working as far as pollinating them as heavens. There's a, there's a lot of, of green berries on it. So hopefully once I get them out into the hoop house they will ripen. Well, I think to close this video off we'll do a little look around here inside of the hoop house and then a look at the uh, perennial fruit and vegetable garden that they things that survived winter. This is one of the two fig trees. I no longer cover them at night. I've left the coverings here in case I need them. And as you can see, those heat tapes, cables, whatever, are still there. I uh, don't have those plugged in either, but I don't want to take them in yet because uh, we could yet have a cold snap, a cold night, and I would want to come out and turn the cables back on and cover them up again. But as you can see, they're starting to get leaves. And I don't know if it's if I can show you it or not. Ooh, now it won't go into focus, but that's a little fig starting out on the side of that particular branch. You might remember in one of my recent videos in here, I guess the one where I pruned the uh, grapevines, which still don't have leaves, by the way, but the buds are really swelling. It won't be long now and they'll break open. But I mentioned that the uh, center purlin was bent and that the plastic was quite loose. Well, the plastic is still relatively loose, but I found a way of tightening it up. Um, the purlin, when it bent down and the hoops are attached to it, that pulled the hoops up out of their sockets. They're not... Uh, you know, cemented into cement or even driven into the ground. The hoops fit inside of pipes that are driven into the ground. The pipe's just slightly larger than the hoop. So when the purlin came down, it pulled those up. And by shoving them back down again, I was able to, uh, well, not completely tighten it, but improved it quite a bit. My onion sets arrived and have been planted for, well, I don't know, close to a week, I guess. And they've most of them have sprouted. There's still a few to sprout yet, but I won't be ready to put them out in the garden for um, 10 days to two weeks yet anyway. That's just a couple of the uh, cutting leaf celery. Um, the reason I'm showing you these is they've been out here for a couple of weeks and I haven't protected them at all. So evidently it's not getting cold enough in here at night that it's bothering them any. This winter with the heavy snow did a lot of damage to small trees and bushes and shrubs and whatever. I have five or six black currants and they each had uh, a branch or two that was, well, damaged enough that I had to prune it off. Anyway, I just took them and stuck them in the soil in here and they're all leaving out. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that they root because uh, black currants are, are very easy to, to root. And next to them there, oh, well, that's going to show, but that is more cuttings off of the uh, uh, Chinese, Japanese maple tree, blood good. And it is starting to leave out. That does not mean that that's going to grow roots or live. I had that happen in the house and then it died on me. So anyway, it's another attempt. We'll see what happens. Well, this is the Catonia, Claytonia, and the corn salad. And I'm finally going to have a salad out of it, mainly because I've noticed that they've started to produce blossom buds, and I'm sure I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to prune some of it back and have some in a salad tonight. I've been pinching it off and, and eating it just fresh out here, and they're both very good. I enjoy them very much, but I'm going to have to move over to the other side, but this will give you an idea, I guess, of what I'm about here. Giving them a real haircut. This is the three Salanova, special kind of lettuce that, uh, oh, I don't know, I started them quite a few weeks ago, I guess. Anyway, they've been out here for well, more than two weeks, probably close to three weeks. I was putting them under the cold frame at night, but I've stopped doing that now. But what surprised me is when they were in the house growing under lights, they were green. Of course, I never get red under the under the grow lights anyway but I didn't realize that there were even a red variety uh, the seed packet that I bought is a mixture of I think it was three different kinds of Salanova I've got to go back on Johnny Seeds 
YouTube channel there, and I've watched their videos, and I don't recall them showing a red variety. But anyway, I have three red varieties, and they seem to be growing quite well, but I won't take any leaves off of those tonight. They're still quite small. I'll add to my salad some of the Ruby Streaks mustard, mainly because, once again, this is starting to bloom, and I know I don't want it to, to flower. And uh, it says Ruby Streaks, which I thought would mean... You know, some, some red in the leaves, streaks in the leaves, but the new leaves are completely red. And the old ones that were there before I brought it out here are, of course, green. But I've been eating it, and it's, it's got a mustard flavor, which you would expect from a mustard, but it isn't, it isn't brutal. It's not hot or difficult to eat at all. It's just a nice, pleasant mustard flavor. So in with my other salad greens there, it'll make a... A nice addition to this evening's salad. When I still had the uh, cold frame over top of the corn salad in Claytonia, this came up and I thought, hmm, it's a weed. So I grabbed a hold of it and pulled it out and it's a chestnut. I forgot having done it last year and now I can't remember how many chestnuts I might have stuck in the ground there, but so far that's the only one that's come up. And I just potted it in that bag, and it's continued to grow. It's from my red flowering horse chestnut tree. So I'll have a small seedling chestnut tree sometime this summer to give to somebody, I guess. I planted a patch of peas in here about a week ago, and there, every one of them is up now. I think there are 40 seedlings there. The variety is uh, the crown pea. I grew it last year, and it's, it's such a pretty plant. Uh, I would grow it, I guess, whether it had peas or not. It's very small pods with only a few peas in each pod, but they're tasty, sweet peas. But it gets his name. If you saw my videos last summer, I showed them. It, it, uh, it sort of has a crown of blossoms rather than single blossoms that most peas have on the vine, growing up and down the vine. It'll have a cluster at the top. It's a, a bush type. It only grows three or four feet tall. Uh, it'll have a cluster, a circle of blossoms, and they're pink and white. So it does look like a pink and white crown. Um, the uh, seed company, Annapolis Seed Company, calls it a very rare variety. Uh, there's only a few seeds in the in the packet, but they're not that expensive or anything. But anyway, those are going to be my first peas. Well, this is my grafted Asian pear, a small tree. It is grafted with four varieties of, of Asian pear, supposed to give you a continuous, you know, early, mid, and late season pears. Um, I don't know. It's going to bloom, I guess, because what we're looking at here, this that particular bud anyway, has, has blossom buds in it. And when I look at some of the other ones, they also look the same, like they're going to have... I don't know if it needs to have more than one of the varieties bloom so they can cross-pollinate and produce fruit or not. But anyway, the size of this thing, I wouldn't dare let it produce more than two or three pairs. It would break the limbs off of it. But I'm glad it made it through the winter. I was concerned about it there for a while. It uh, was practically buried in snow except for the top part. And then that made me realize that bunny rabbits could walk along the snow and nibble the branches off. So I covered it with... Uh, spun bonded row cover and it seems to have worked. It didn't have any bunny damage and it doesn't seem to have had any great deal of winter damage. I see some small twigs there with uh, um, buds on them that don't look too good. They may not open, but the majority of it looks like it made it through. So hard to get anything to show up because it's all basically the same color as the ground behind it. But you can see here these are leaving out quite nicely. I planted three, one of each variety of, uh, they're sort of like a dwarf uh, cherry shrub more than a, than a tree. They only grow six or seven feet tall or something like that. And Bessie's offered three different kinds and I planted all three. Uh, before I got them covered up, late fall, early winter, there was an attack by rabbits that did a severe pruning on the one that was small to begin with and pruned also the medium-sized one. Well, I covered everything over with large containers after that, and the largest one and the medium-sized one made it through fine. The one that the rabbits had really shortened up, uh, rodents got under the container that I had over it and chewed the bark off of it. So. 
it I think is gone unless it should happen to come back from the roots. I'll leave it alone and, and keep watering it anyway. These are my Egyptian walking onions, and as is usual, these things are very hardy. They came through the winter beautifully. These larger ones, I will be starting to dig very soon now and, and use them as spring onions. They're, they're delicious this time of year, something fresh out of the garden. And if I can zoom you in, hopefully. There. Those smaller ones that are beside them, uh, they form small onions on the top of the plant in the summer. That's why it's called a walking onion. The weight of those makes it fall over and they'll take root and, and walk around the garden. I take those off and plant them and I have a long straight row of them there and they've all come up. Those will just be allowed to grow all summer and next spring they will be ready to be spring onions. Once again, almost impossible to see this because it's the same color as the background. But these are my hascaps. This is one of the three hascaps that I brought in from Alberta, I think it was, last summer. Uh, not at all surprised that they made it through because they're native to the tundra. And this is like the tropics for them, even after the miserable winter that we had. I'm not sure how old they were. Like, they're obviously several years old when I got them and I don't know how old they have to be before they bloom and bear fruit. So I don't see anything yet that looks like a, a blossom, and they're one of the earliest things to produce fruit. So it doesn't look like it's going to happen this year unless all of a sudden they bloom out, I guess. But anyway, I have three of them, and they all made it through beautifully. This is a close-up of one of the two goji berries. I grew them from seed last year. This one, at least, I think is alive. Those look like living buds there to me. They seem to be swelling. I'm not so sure about the top part of it. I think they may have winter killed. Uh, the other one has definitely got one dead branch, but it has another branch that sort of looks like this too. So maybe, maybe not on the goji berries. I'm not sure. This is my good King Henry, which I grew from seed last year. Looking forward to trying it this summer sometime, I hope. These long things here were last year's growth, so it does become quite large, I guess, even grown from seed, but I think I count eight of these little plants of it coming up, so they, they overwintered here quite nicely. Now to finish off with, I think I'll dig a few Jerusalem artichokes, sunchokes, whatever, to go along with dinner this evening. I'm curious to see what's down there, because the moles really enjoyed them this winter. There was a partial one laying on the ground here that I was going to show you, but I can't find it anymore, so I guess they've been back and eaten the partial one even. Well, they look good. Starting to sprout. Good to get some of them out of the ground, or the patch will be too big, I guess. bigger than the ones I remember digging, digging last fall. I must have dug in an area where they were quite small last fall. Well, I think that will do to go along with dinner this evening. Fresh dug Jerusalem artichokes. Give you a look at them there. You see where they're sprouting. And they're soon going to be coming up. Still quite very firm, though, so still good to eat, I would say. Well, thank you very much for watching. That concludes this week's video.